Hello everybody, welcome back. They are coming in hot. We have another portfolio review to go over today. This is the 27th portfolio review that I've done on the channel, which is absolutely wild. And I just want to take a moment to thank everybody that has submitted their portfolio. Once again, if you want to submit your portfolio for me to go over, do it over on the Discord link description or message me on Twitter at Ryan Dingler Show. This is a series where I go over one of my subscribers' portfolio. I go over all their holdings, their investment strategy, goals, objectives, all that, and I'll give my input, my thoughts, and what I'd like to see more of, less of. And we have a very, very interesting portfolio to go over today. Some would even say it's degenerate, as he claimed. Before we get into that, check out the due dividend stocks that drugs merchandise, the best looking merchandise for any dividend investor. Thank you and on to the video. Dissector, you are an idiot. Hello, I like money. So to start these videos off, I always like to go over the investor's age, objectives of the portfolio, goals, and more. Because what my objectives and what my goals in my own portfolio and situation is going to be wildly different. It's really person to person. That's something that I like to preach on this channel because there is no one size fits all in investing and nothing should really be forbidden unless it's yield max funds of course. But in all seriousness he shares that he's 26 years old and his goal is a bit different from the usual. This will be interesting. So he wants to get the $2,000 a month in dividends to attend college in Japan and not have to work. Aiming that $2,000 a month in 6 to 8 years. He wants to keep two thirds of his portfolio in quote unquote safe dividends and then spend the rest in risky stocks and he also shares that he has a big stake in Rivian and that he believes he may not see a return until 2027 or 2028. I'll first off say props, you're on a long term time horizon when it comes to Rivian. A lot of these people in these you know kind of tech and you know growth stocks quote unquote like Rivian, Palantir, all that stuff. A lot of them expect to see a return real fast. While I feel for a lot of these companies, there is still a long-term bull thesis. It's just not a lot of investors really pay attention or invest for that long-term thesis. Currently, his portfolio has a dividend yield of 2.9% and a dividend yield on cost of 2.86%. I wouldn't really pay attention to that. Obviously, it's kind of at a short-term time horizon so far. I like the strategy of being able to get $2,000 a month in dividends and go to Japan. And honestly, 68 years, that's going to fly by and that's going to be here sooner than you think. So I think you are kind of in the right to go for some more safe quote unquote dividend stocks. I mean 26 is still pretty relatively young and I would say if you can potentially try to look into bidding a Roth IRA or maybe just getting a new account for you know just S&P 500 or VU. I think that's a good thing to start at least compounding because when you're chasing dividend income and especially if you're looking to live off of it you are definitely sacrificing some potential long-term growth and compounding in the process. That's just honestly the trade-off. So right now we're definitely looking for a lot of stability no matter the economic condition you're still looking for that kind of stable stock that stable dividend that's going to be coming in and maybe a little bit of growth in the process. So you're going to be looking for companies that during a recession would not cut their dividend. And this is honestly going to be a bit of a different portfolio review that we're going over. I really haven't had many where the people are actually looking to live off of the dividends in, you know, five to eight years or relatively quick. A lot of these are just long-term portfolios for hopefully 50, 60 years, you know, you live off of it. So this is definitely a different one and going to be an interesting one. Also, it's important to mention that Half Empty is a Cash Flow Kings LLC employee, and he's going to be raking in dough from them in a few years. Go subscribe and support us if you haven't already. All right, let's get into the holdings. To start off in the portfolio, over 51% of his portfolio is an SCHD. And honestly, I think this is actually a decent move. Now, SCHD, a lot of people like to harp on it for netting an underperformer. I think this is a really quick switch up. SCHD was actually outperforming just 10 months ago. So it's very funny to see how a lot of people flip-flop with SCHD. I think right now there's a lot of overheating on the SCHD ETF itself. I hold SCHD in my portfolio. It makes about 8% of my portfolio at the moment. A lot of people harp on me. But eventually, I do want to use some of my SCHD dividends to fund other investments or just stuff. And I think that it's honestly a pretty solid mix of growth and dividend yield. I think SCHD is a really good alternative if you're looking to live off or use those dividends between 5 and 15 years. And I think for half the empty circumstances, I think SCHD is honestly the perfect dividend ETF to go. It's right in the mix. It's not a total Jep Q, 10% dividend yield. And it's not VU where you're getting like half a percent. You're getting honestly a solid mix of growth and yield. And especially for his circumstances, I think SCHD is honestly the perfect fit. So I really do like it, especially for that dividend income fact that you're looking for. Next is Altria, which makes up 10.2% of the portfolio. This is a really interesting one. 
All three is a heavily debated stock, and you're definitely going to be getting yield on this, but it is definitely a bit of a value play. I think Altria for his time horizon is a solid play as well. 5-15 years, I think Altria is definitely going to continue paying the dividend, but there definitely are some longer term risks on a 30, 40, 50 year time horizon. That's why you got to build your own thesis, research the company, etc. Altria aims to have a payout ratio based off a free cash flow of 80%. As long as Altria continues producing a large amount of free cash flows that they are, and that stays stagnant and goes up hopefully a little bit over time, they will continue paying that dividend. Altria also traded up this week because they announced they'd be selling their stake in Bud Light, Anheuser-Busch, InBev, and they're going to be allocating a lot of that money towards share buybacks. Now, I think Altria buying back shares, especially at these low and discount prices, is going to be a, a major value driver for shareholders. Altria also displayed in 2022 during a tougher economic time with the insane inflation that, that they could continue to increase prices and display great pricing power in their business to combat inflation. I think Altria is a really solid business, and I think it is overhated as well, but there are definitely some real risks with it. Price is what you pay, value is what you get, and I think right now, Altria at below $40 was being really severely discounted. I would potentially consider trimming Altria for gains if it goes into like the 50s, high 50s, maybe even low 60s. I'm going to likely do that, you know, just long term, it isn't the best stock to own, but I think if I can get out at gains and reallocate the money into my forever companies, that's what I'm personally going to be looking to do, but right now I do think Altria, I'd be happy to collect an 8-9% dividend yield just to wait for an eventual recovery. Right now they're producing the cash flows to back it up, a lot of people do say that Altria is a dividend yield trap, and I disagree. First of all, they can't control the yield that their stock trades at. And again, their dividend right now is safe based off of their earnings. Altria is a business that most effectively really rewards their shareholders through dividends and buying back shares. And that's what they put a lot of their cash flows toward, which I'm fine with, especially if the company's trading at a crazy discount. Next, 0.3% of his portfolio is in realty, not reality income. I think realty income is a decent stock. It's definitely like plain chicken breast, as Matt the Dividend Profit put it. It's going to get the job done. You're going to get your monthly dividend, but there's really not much on top of that. I will say, though, the higher interest rates make it a lot more appealing right now for REITs and utilities, so I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on realty income. If it goes below $45, I'll likely have to add kind of the same case scenario as a company like Altria. The value is there and they're producing the cash flows. There's going to be an eventual recovery. Very small position, but I would also consider looking at Vici. You're going to still get that dividend yield, but I believe maybe a safer core business long term and a lot more growth potential. I would definitely look into Vici if I were you, because you're going to be getting that yield regardless and the growth exposure. Next, he owns OKE. This is an energy company that I honestly don't know much about. They have a 5.5% dividend yield, and I don't think gas is going anywhere anytime soon. Next, he has 32.9% of his portfolio in Rivian, and I'm very curious to hear his Rivian bull case. I'll say this, though, he is highly convicted on the company. I'm sure he's done tons of research and has a long-term thesis for it. So, I mean, I, I personally really don't like it, but, you know, he has his own thesis with it. If it pans out well over a long-term time horizon, he's definitely going to be getting that growth pack that he's potentially missing with some of the yield options right now. But uh, me personally, just too high of a stake, I would consider trimming it to maybe 20%. If that were me, though. And lastly, 2.4 of his portfolio is in a uranium ETF, which I don't have much thoughts on, to be completely honest. This is one of the more unique portfolios I've ever covered on the channel. Honestly, I can truthfully say it. This is also definitely a different strategy. I would consider looking into REITs and utilities right now. I think if you're looking for yield right now, they're at a crazy discount because of the interest rates. In my opinion, that's a short to medium term issue. A few companies to look at, I think, would be Southern Company, Next Air Energy, and Vici. I want to thank Half Empty for submitting his portfolio. It was definitely one of the more interesting portfolios that I've ever gone over. What I say it's degenerate, it's pretty close on the line, but what are you going to do at the end of the day? I want to thank you, the viewer, for making it to the video. I really like the series a lot, so if you guys want to submit your portfolio, once again, do it on Twitter, at Ryan English Show, or in the Discord link in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Smash the like button, subscribe, check out the Cash Flow Kings YouTube link in the description. And of course, do dividend stocks, not drugs. Have a good one.